Hello, hello, and welcome to Mode 7, the show where we play games and talk about them. I'm your host, Serge Manex, and replaced by Monkey Man this week, we have Monkey Kong here. How you doing, Monkey Kong? Hey, Serge Manex, thanks for having me on the show. I'm excited uh, to be on for the first time, and I hope we have a good show today. Yes, it's uh, so great to have the member of the Kong family here with us to talk about Donkey Kong Country 2 on the Super Nintendo. So, uh, Monkey Kong, what was your uh, first impressions of the game? So, my first impressions, uh, it it looked like a fun game right from the start. And I noticed it's just a simple platformer, which I like. And um, pretty close to the beginning of the game, you're able to hit a barrel and unlock another monkey, a female monkey. And she has different abilities than Diddy has. And I'm like, oh, okay, this is going to be really cool. I'm really going to like this. And you're able to switch in between his character and her character at will anytime you want and be able to uh, use which skill set is most valuable at the time. Right. Um, definitely playing as each of the monkeys have this pros and cons. Uh, cons, get it? pros and cons oh they're very good all right <laughs> <laughs> i like that nice <laughs> actually before i get into my first impressions i have to say man the the title screen like tripped me up because as a kid i read the game as donkey kong country 2 diddy's conquest like he's going on a quest but in actuality conquest it's it's like he's taken over something i thought that was pretty clever and uh i didn't notice that until now uh, did you notice that at all or or not really no man i just i skipped the intro screens i of course skipped you the did text i i, I skipped story yep skipped, skipped the story uh, i bet you don't even know what the plot of the game is no no i don't i, have no clue. <laughs> I, I, I play the game with the sound off so i don't have to hear the music <laughs> I have no idea. I just want to play it, get through it, and say I did it and uh, have some fun along the way. But yeah, you I'm know worried. what? You know that with that, we'll transition into the music. What did you think about the soundtrack? <laughs> <laughs> After uh, watching your last episode, because this is my first time on the show, uh, you know, you were talking about the music <laughs> and uh, how I didn't pay attention to it, even though it was my idea for that specific category. Uh, I mean, Monkey Man's idea for that category. Yes, yes, Monkey Man. I, yeah, yeah. Um, so, you know, I was trying to pay attention to it a little bit more this time. Um, the music, it was fine. It, it wasn't anything that grabbed me. Um, what? what? One thing, yeah, I, I know. I, I figured that was going to kill you. Um, but one thing that did um, surprise me, uh, one of the tracks I did like was, I think it was in the shop. It was actually the same um, soundtrack that you used the for the first time that um, Monkey Man went into Mike's shop recycled DVDs in Florida. Is that correct? That is correct. Yes, I used the music of uh, Donkey Kong Country 1 and 2 for those mm. videos. Yeah, that was a good song. I like that one. I thought the music is outstanding for a for a Super Nintendo game. I think the composer David Wise, he really use the limitations of the SNES hardware to really make some great music. And even for me personally, music I could listen to outside the context of the game. Like, hmm. I think it's among the best on the Super Nintendo. Like, no no competition, especially with Donkey Kong Country 2. So, I don't know how far you made it in the game. Um, I beat the first boss. You beat the first boss. Okay. Yeah, so as you as you progress through the game, there's just so much variety with the music. It really, like... To me, enhances the, the gameplay, because... Like, the gameplay is fun, but the music really makes the whole experience come together. Um... So, I mean... All right, so you... For you, I guess the music's just okay. I, I really love the music, so with that, we'll... Move on to the gameplay, and what did you think about uh, the gameplay uh, in general? I really like the gameplay. I think, again, like, this is a simple platformer. Uh, there were some parts that were challenging, but, like, it wasn't overly difficult. I like how, again, like, you could switch between the two characters. I thought that was really unique. 
I liked how you could collect bananas. I like how there are like hidden barrels that will launch you into like bonus zones or whatever thing. Um, I liked how you could ride on like the rhinoceros and like once I started doing that, I was like, oh, this is awesome. Like it again, like kind of uh, reminded me a little bit of Little Nemo Dream World. Um, Except Dream, a million Dream times Master. better. No, yeah, yeah, Little Nemo is a million times better, yeah. No, 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 wait, what? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. Little Nemo's the Dream Master is better than yeah. Donkey Kong Country 2? Are you dude, high? Dude, it's one of my favorite games after you had me play it. Dude, that was, like, the best, <laughs> was one of the best games I've ever played. Uh, the viewers, the viewers must be dumbfounded. Uh, you know what, I, I kick you off the show, I'm gonna bring Monkey Man back. Alright, so... <laughs> Monkey Kong is gone. Hello, hello, Monkey Man. Welcome, welcome to episode eleven of Mode Seven, the, the show where we play games and talk about them. Hey, uh, so yeah. what do you think about the gameplay of Donkey Kong Country Two? Thanks for switching me out, just like uh, the gameplay of Donkey Kong Country Two. Yes, I, I, I ta- you got tagged <laughs> out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> gameplay was great. Um, a lot of fun. Had some. Verticals, climbing up ropes, collecting bananas, uh, swinging from hooks, um, all types of different enemies. It was it really, really entertaining, really kept switching it up. Um, it was a great game. First time playing it, I really enjoyed it. I love the, with this game uh, especially, the uh, animal buddies that they included, like Rambi the Rhinoceros. It was cool. Yeah. Hopping on him and then breaking through walls to reveal secret bonus stages. Uh, then you have Ingard the Swordfish, really makes traveling through underwater um, a, a better experience. Um, we have, you know, there's a snake buddy, there's a spider buddy, a parrot, uh, a lot, of, a lot of variety. And there's even times where you'll enter like a, a buddy barrel and you'll turn into that that animal buddy. So there's actually a stage. It's actually a secret stage where you go into the, you play the whole level as different animal buddies. You don't actually play as the Kongs, so you really get a feel of their different abilities and you get put to the test. Okay, yeah, I didn't get that far in the game. That sounds interesting though. But yeah, definitely, I, I definitely love the animal buddies. Uh, the rhino was really cool. Um, the swordfish was really cool as well. I think I might like that one even better. I, I wasn't crazy about the snake. The snake was all right. He kind of. Uh, coils his body into a spring and you could jump a little bit higher and whatnot but um yeah the swordfish and the rhino were definitely really cool but again like even just that they integrated that into the game like man i I just love that it's so unique and it's just so fun to be able to switch the game up like that that was really cool yeah definitely so surge man what'd you think about the graphics in this game i thought (laughs) i thought the graphics were great (laughs) i think also among the best of the console, uh, definitely compared to what you know, games were coming out in the Sega Genesis. I think Donkey Kong Country, the Donkey Kong Country series, really, I guess, showed the the power of the Super Nintendo hardware. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it definitely gave a sense of the characters looked a little bit more three D, even though they're in a two D world, you know. And it, it was quite impressive how they were able to do that and. You know, like the bananas were rotating in the air and things like that. And again, it just, it it really had like a 3D type of feel to it. Like I said, even though it was just a 2D game and, you know, I didn't have any lag or anything with the graphics at all. It it just played well. Yeah, definitely. The game was very fluid. Um, Minimal slowdown in later levels, but nothing, nothing distracting. But I really like the, the look of the different environments you go through. You know, you start off in a pirate ship. And then when you get to the second world, everything's uh, all lava. It looks really good. Eventually, you make your way to a swamp. And then uh, even like a... Uh, there's a stage where you go through like honeycombs and you're surrounded by honey. And then the next stage, you're like in a theme park going on like roller coasters and stuff, which was awesome. Yeah, that sounds really cool. And so in terms of weapons, um, you, you don't really have a lot of weapons in this game. I mean, it's more just like the animal buddies and then the abilities that um diddy and dixie have right i mean what other weapons are there in this right game? i mean no weapons but you know like the animal buddies have their abilities um diddy Kong can cartwheel into enemies especially when you have like a, um, a bunch of them lined up he like just combos into them i suppose 
And then Dixie, she can... I mean, she can pick up barrels. I mean, Diddy, too. They can pick up barrels, cannonballs, and throw them at the enemies in, like, little wooden crates. Mm. But that's really about it. A lot of the times when you pick up cannonballs, you got to put into the to the cannon and it'll shoot you into a bonus stage. Right, right. Now, when you played as Diddy and you cartwheeled, some of the enemies um, actually wouldn't die like that, right? Like, I think some of the upright walking alligator type guys, the reptile guys, um, like some of those enemies, it would actually hurt Diddy and you had to jump on their head, right? Um, I know there's like a blue enemy. He's like pretty like bulky and buff. He um, if I like if, I think if you hit him, he'll like turn into a different color and he'll like stomp around. But a lot of, some of the enemies, yeah, you had to like throw throw like a barrel or an item at them to uh to defeat them. Right. Okay. And then the the boss fights were quite different than just the normal gameplay and the normal uh cartwheels and and stuff like that. Right so how are the bosses um yeah so the first boss it's like this giant pirate crow so you gotta like he's gonna throw eggs at you and you throw the eggs back there's like a lot of the bosses you're like throwing things like the second boss is like a giant sword and you can't actually like touch it it's gonna like it's gonna damage you so a cannonball will spawn and you just throw the cannonball at him i mean there's a there's a couple, uh, I think there's one boss, the boss after that, I think you do, no, no, I think, I think mainly every boss involves you throwing items or barrels and stuff at, at the bosses. And how would you rate the difficulty of the bosses? I wouldn't say it's too terribly difficult. I mean, you, like, you might die a couple of times, but that's really like any game you want, you gotta die until you nail the pattern down, you know, but I wouldn't say the the bosses were like crazy difficult. I would say it was, it was just about right. Yeah. Uh, so honestly, um, you know, I only got past the first boss and um, I couldn't figure out what to do <laughs> to fight that first boss. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm like, what in the world? I, I, so I had to YouTube it. And then after I YouTubed it, I'm like, oh, stupid. Like, <laughs> oh my God. It's, it's so simple, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> yeah. And then, All right, like, so, yeah, yeah you only have experience was... with the first boss, so... Yeah. Oh, man, it's too bad you need to make it further, because the final boss of the game is a, a really good fight. Mm. He's definitely the hardest fight, Captain Captain K. Rool. Ca- oh, I thought you were going to say Captain Ginyu. No, no, not Captain K. Rool's cooler than Captain Ginyu. What? <laughs> Are you serious? He had a pirate hat on, bro. Oh, okay. So if Ginyu wore a pirate hat, he'd be cool. Ginyu sucks, dude. He got like he got turned to a frog, and then Vegeta killed him when he okay. came back to Earth. Okay. Question: What does Captain Ginyu look like? Well, I don't know what his original form is because he said he's always changed bodies. But right, Captain, right, good. Okay. The Captain no, Ginyu that most people know of is like when he's like purple and has those two spikes out of his head. Yeah, yeah. But when he when he came back in Resurrection of F. Vegeta just killed him with no effort, so he he's garbage, bro. Yeah, yeah, all right, fair enough. Yeah, but then again, uh, all right, well, uh, whatever. I'm not going to get too off topic. <laughs> let's right. uh, let's move on to dislikes, because I actually like, I dislike your opinion on, on Captain Ginyu. <laughs> okay, give it a, well, t- too bad uh, the viewers won't know that because YouTube took down the uh, dislike button, so. <laughs> fair enough <laughs> <laughs> um dislikes uh you know i thought um that once you collected a, a barrel and you got another player which was dixie i thought there were gonna be more uh characters that were gonna join your team and because that wasn't the case that was a small dislike of mine um although i, I suppose that's more of a not really a dislike of the game, but a dislike of that they didn't have an extra feature. Um, in terms of dislikes, um, I don't know. You know, I can't really say too much that I didn't like about the game. I just think it played overall really well. I think it was a fun, pretty simple platformer. Um, sometimes, um, like when I'm climbing like the pirate ship or whatever, there were different nets and different, just like different little, there was like, 
the right way to go and then kind of there, there could be a shortcut way or like some hidden stuff and I think I missed out on a couple of those um there were things where I didn't realize at first that there were like hidden barrels uh that would go to bonus zones or something like that and um I don't know maybe if I didn't skip the intro screen or listen to some of the <laughs> the storyline or something I would have known about that but um if that wasn't there maybe uh you know maybe that it would have been nice to know like going into the game um which again is still probably not even the fault of the game or the developers so yeah I, I really can't say there's much i didn't like about the uh the game what about you um honestly i can't really there's really nothing i dislike about the game um it was pretty solid great graphics great music um pretty good gameplay i i can't really complain I, there's really nothing i i dislike about the game if you enjoyed this episode of mode 7 give it a like and comment below your thoughts on today's topic please consider subscribing to the channel and hit that bell to be notified when the next surgeman x video drops have a good day and peace out